welcome to Desk Geek. We have an incredible video for you today. Now, this is going to be controversial. I'm going to go down the rabbit hole. I'm going to put myself out there and tell you what I think the best browser is. I'm going to show you my scoring me methodology because I think that's really important. You may disagree with that methodology, and that's okay. You may disagree with the verdict, and you may have a your favorite browser, and you don't want anybody telling you there's a better browser out there, or you have tests that you use that you think are better than the ones I have. I completely applaud that. Leave your comments below. Let me know what tests you want to see in the future because this is a segment we'll probably have to do in a few months from now as changes happen to these browsers because what their position is today may change tomorrow. There could be a huge security flaw found in one of them, and when you take them off, there may be a huge differentiating add-on that occurs that makes one browser start to become superior. And I really didn't expect the rankings to fall the way they did. If I was to guess, if you asked me before I did this video how the rankings were going to be, I would put Chrome as number one. I would have put Mozilla and Opera probably tied for number two, and Edge would have come in last. And I also included, when applicable, Microsoft Internet Explorer as well to be able to say, for instance, under compatibility, if Internet Explorer was compatible with other stuff, then I would have given it a point anyways, because Edge is kind of that, I really don't know what, it, what, what are you doing with the Edge? Is it supposed to be their main browser? I don't know. It's kind of like their beta thing for Windows 10, but you still have Internet Explorer 2 for other things. So I don't know where Edge is going to land, if they're going to merge the two products eventually, but whatever Edge Internet Explorer is, it's there. So these are your top four browsers. These are the ones you're probably going to be deciding against when you're picking a browser. And here are the, the categories. We have compatibility, interface, plugins, add-ons, privacy, security, resources, so how much CPU and memory is it using, and then benchmark speed battles. And then from there, we do some breakouts of those to get our winners. So if you don't want to watch the rest of the video, you just want to know, DOS, tell me what, what browser to download right now. I could tell you the winner was Opera, which was surprising. I love Opera. I've had a lot of videos about Opera, specifically what they're doing with VPN or their proxy, more proxy-related VPN service that's free. And I did not expect them to come out the winner, but they did, and Mozilla came in in a second place, and then next would be Chrome. So I didn't expect Chrome to be third in this, but they were. So, and, and you have my full ratings here that we'll go through. So if I'm going to tell you to download a browser, if I'm going to tell my friends and family to download a browser today, it's going to be Opera Developer Browser. Download it. I think it's one of the best out there. If you hate Opera Developer Browser for some reason, you don't like Opera, then your next bet would be Mozilla. And then after that, Chrome. And then if you still like, I don't care what anybody thinks, then go ahead and use Edge. Uh, that is if you have a device that's compatible with it. So let's go through these rankings real quick so you can see how I scored these. And the first subject here is compatibility. So does it work on Windows? Does it work on Linux? Does it work on mobile platforms, iOS and Android? So across the board, Mozilla, Opera, and Chrome have apps for all of that. Edge, on the other hand, does not. For instance, there is no app available for iOS for Edge or Internet Explorer, for that matter. So they would have got a point potentially if it had it there, but they don't. So Mozilla, Opera, Chrome, compatible across all your devices. You have apps that you can download so you can use it seamlessly. And in addition, you can use the sign-on feature so that you can save your bookmarks no matter what device you're adding the browser onto, what device you're using. As long as you have a sign-on created, your bookmarks will transfer between the devices. So you won't have a certain set of bookmarks on your desktop and then a different set on your mobile. All of them have that sign-on feature, which is really beautiful. Uh, as far as interface, everybody got a point because that's highly subjective. So here you can kind of get a good idea of the interfaces. This is Mozilla. Mozilla interface is quite beautiful. I have loved it for many, many years. I still love it today. You have everything you need at your fingertips. Very easy to navigate through the menus. Now, I didn't take a point away, even though Microsoft Edge is very simplistic. You don't have everything right there at your fingertips. You do have the core features, and you can dig and get to anything that you need within there. So you may decide, I like the cleaner look. I don't want all of these gadgets and buttons and things. I just want a clean browser, get me to where I go, and that's it. And Edge certainly does a good job there. Opera is kind of, I don't know, maybe a middle ground 
between the two because it's got just a very clean interface but gorgeous a lot of customization options really like it and chrome uh as we all know it's it's google based so you'd think it would be the simplest interface but it's really not there's a lot you can do with chrome uh, a lot of add-ons and things and a lot of buttons that will eventually be popping up and extensions but you can customize these browsers to make them look any way you want because that was subjective in the the um interface and the beauty of the interface everybody got a point because you can really make them what you want so let's go back to our scoring method here plugins and add-ons so everybody got a point here except for edge because they don't have plugins or add-ons available um, firefox opera and chrome do and they have quite a lot of them and they have all of the core ones between each other so your ad blocks and things that you may want so i think they all do a good job there now it could be subjective to say well this one has this extension or add-on that i use and this one doesn't it all depends on what your browsing habits on for the most part those three mozilla firefox opera and chrome have all the extensions and add-ons that you're going to really need uh to utilize it effectively chrome probably has the advantage but then again they have a whole chrome operating system built upon these kind of add-ons extensions and different plugins etc so the next category starts the next two categories really where we start to differentiate between the browsers. This is where breakaways start happening. So the first section here is privacy. And I'm gonna pull up my little uh, cheat sheet here on the right, which is some of my notes while I was doing this. So for privacy, one of the things I was looking at is, does it have incognito mode capabilities? And across the board, all of them had that. So they all had the incognito mode option. Now. Opera has an extra point. It's the only one as an extra point here because incognito mode doesn't really keep you safe. It just kind of keeps people from knowing where you visited once you close down that browser. So if you don't want your spouse to know what websites you're on, it's kind of good for that. But for the most part, it's not really making you secure at all. Uh, it's really not keeping your information that private. But the fact they all have incognito mode is great and wonderful. And you could set it up so that these browsers automatically open in the incognito mode and all of them have that option. So again, no real differentiator there. Here's why Opera gets another point. They have the proxy, free proxy VPN service built in to the developer edition. And because of that, you have far more security than you're going to get out of incognito mode by itself. So all of them have the options to block cookies, to do all of that with the, with internally but the easiest one by far, in my opinion, is to turn on the VPN with Opera, the proxy VPN, and you're good to go. And you don't have to dig through the settings. You don't have to do a control N or something to open a private window. Once you set that, every time you open it, that VPN is going to go and connect itself. So I think it's more secure as far as privacy goes. And that's why it got the extra point here and starts to break away from the pack even further. Next, we're going to come into security, and this is the one that kills, unfortunately, Mozilla Firefox. So when we talk about security, we're looking for vulnerabilities, and what I used is a site called BrowserScope. And BrowserScope came across several vulnerability issues, and I'll talk about them here. And you can look at in this section. So Chrome failed on two static HTML API, and it passed on all the others, which was good. Opera failed onto static HTML API as well and passed all others. Edge failed onto static API origin header but passed all others. Mozilla failed onto static HTML X content types and origin header origin headers, which was really surprising to me. Um, so two static HTML API is really just checking does the browser support that for sanitizing untrusted inputs. Origin header, cross-site request forgery attacks, reproducible link executes a specific action on a page while the user is logged on. So origin header is kind of a big deal. Can be a big deal. And Edge failing there and Mozilla failing there, not very good. And X content type support prevents uh, MIME or HTML header sniffing um, kind of security uh, gaps. So if it supports that X content, then that won't happen uh, or is not easily, um, what's the word, easily broken into. If it doesn't support that, then there's a vulnerability there. So I was surprised Mozilla had those vulnerabilities to it. And that gave 
everyone that had a missing uh, failure in the security, so any one of those that it failed on was negative one point. So in Mozilla's case, this is where it got negative three points because it had three potential vulnerabilities for it. Opera had one, Chrome had one, and Edge had two potential vulnerabilities for it. So very interesting, and that knocked Mozilla very far down, even though it had done really, really well up to that point. But either way, when you look at the final scores here, you can see that no matter how you cut it, even if you took away one of those vulnerabilities, you say, well, that's not as big of a vulnerability today as it was back in the day or whatever, they're still not going to come close to beating out Opera. Opera really went ahead of the pack um, so far that nobody could have caught up even if you added some points or taken them away in differing areas. Um, so CPU usage, you got Mozilla uh, got a point here. So the top two received a point and the bottom two did not get a point in here. So the least amount of CPU usage and resources, you received a point and this was running three tabs, one of which was running 4K video through YouTube. And I'll show some of the testing that I did down below in a separate video just so you can kind of see me running it. And so Mozilla and Opera use the least amount of CPU. As far as memory goes, Opera and Edge use the least amount of memory. So Chrome and Edge use the most CPU and Mozilla and Chrome use the most memory resources while they were running. The next thing I did was a benchmark speed test. I used Speed Battle and Jetstream. And you can see here Speed Battle, the top two again received a point. The bottom two did not get a point. Speed Battle, Mozilla, Fire, Mozilla Firefox, and Opera were the fastest. And Jetstream, Opera, and Edge were the fastest. So in that case, you've got uh, Opera coming out number one here. It is the most secure for privacy, the least amount of loopholes, and least amount of resources that it was using. Mozilla and Chrome became tied at this point, so I needed the tiebreaker. So I went to the individual results of the CPU and memory to break it down further. And you can see here, Mozilla used about 2% with those three tabs in the 4K video. Opera was at 4%, Chrome was at 4%, and Edge was at 4%. So because Mozilla had the least amount of resources used for you, or least amount of CPU used, it got a plus one, which brought it to four. And Chrome didn't get anything. Nobody's going to catch up to Opera. Chrome didn't get anything here. Edge actually got a point for memory. So now we have Mozilla Firefox at four, Chrome at three, and Edge at three. So at this point, Mozilla Firefox comes into second place. But I went ahead and did an additional kind of tiebreaker here. And you can see this is the speed battle. It talks about the total scores are at the top and then the individual calculations are here. So the calculation ability, the storing ability and the rendering ability for each of the browsers. And obviously the higher score is better. So Mozilla came in first here, Opera came in second, Chrome came in third and Edge Actually, Edge came in third and Chrome came in last overall. And I ran these tests three times with each browser uh, because you would get slightly varying results when you ran it each time. Not enough to really change the scores dramatically, but this is the median here of the three runs. So Speed Battle gives Mozilla an additional point so it can get as high as five if you use that tiebreaker. Opera still being at eight with everything involved. So that's it. That's my recommendation for the best browser. Today is Opera, or second close is Firefox. Although those security loopholes really throw me off, Chrome may be the one to use there. The only problem I kind of have with Chrome is the potential for all the metadata grabbing when you're using all those different uh, Google services, etc. But if you set your privacy settings and everything correctly, that could be your, your next best bet. So, that's it. That's what I've come up with. I am very interested in your comments below. If you want to see a different browser tested in the future, you want me to add to this list because we'll do this a video again, or a different kind of test that you think would be more effective, or at least at a differing view that you want to see, we can add that in as well. But I think this was fair. I think we came up with some really good results. I've been using Opera on pretty much everything now. So from that aspect, I've kind of fallen in love with Opera lately and have been using it as one of my primary browsers 
So this test, even though I actually thought Chrome would become in number one, is very interesting because what I enjoy using the most happens to be it apparently, apparently the most effective browser as well. So that's it. That's my video. Leave your comments below. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. It's just a click for you and it really helps me. I hope you have a fabulous week and I will talk to you soon. Don't get this car. Don't get the video.